Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. We got the drop cloths out for concealing the semen of the crime. We got these copper whoppers. Uh, boiled linseed oil, what for swelling the shaft when you're old as dry as me. Use all the help you can get. Beautiful. And uh, the best part is, now I'm your private dancer. Fellas, get a kick out of it. Uh, chucking more loonies and toonies into my G-string, so I'm going to be able to make more of the G's. So thank you. It's, it's amazing. I will remind you that the upload button is the same as mine as yours. So, uh, living proof that uh, there's fucking cool shit out in the world and uh, we can do good. Bit of a non cicator here. I'll get you there. I've been to Japan. I worked in J.A. Pan plenty. And one of the things that strikes you as you go to and fro is how many people are there and yet it's so civil. They got different rules, but everybody follows the rules. It's fantastic. The other thing that strikes you is that when you're given a gift, it always comes in beautiful embalming. The reason being the, the packaging is part of the gift. You ever notice you buy a high-end piece of stereo gear or something like that? It doesn't come in a crappy old, you know, something beautiful doesn't come in a crappy box. That's what this is. We're going to make a beautiful gift package suitable for a beautiful instrument. Boop, boop. We're using a fine specimen from Quebec, Erable, not just for making maple syrup, but also for making nice stiff wood. Now, it only comes in, but for some odd reason, the, the trees only grow in one inch thicknesses, so you gotta laminate them. And the hoss doesn't speak French, so we're gonna have a bit of friggin' and fucking around there. Do you go in hard and fast? Do you go in loose and sleazy? Depends on what kind of French you're speaking. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you are witness to me leveling up the width and breadth of human endeavor. Amazing, this has never happened before. I'm an inch shy and because uh, the grain <laughs> Uh, what's the, uh, I like my women six foot ten. They gotta be tall so I can fit it all in. Cause the grain is so tight, it pinched on the blade. You see that? This material, it ain't no joke. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. How you're supposed to do it and how it's actually done are two entirely different things. Witness to the power of hydrodynamic slip. We push down with oh, a couple tons of force and there's so much pressure in that fluid that there's very little friction and the, the plates, or what are you, planks are allowed to move around. They, they move all over wherever they want. So what we gotta do is bring her back into the fold with old Bessie. Also, while you ducked out to see if this old Tony had uploaded, I skookum facted the vacuum platen, basically with an eye for process reliability and fixturing. The thing is, it wasn't really 100%. Uh, it wasn't that it was jittery or anything, but the, the getting it to clamp was tough. So I'll show you what I do. I got the same air vent cherry, and then I got it going into a receiver tank so that there's a bit more oomph when I open that valve. As you old fellas can attest to, older even than me, we're into a classic pressure versus flow problem. I won't be laughing when I got to struggle with a five pound prostate. It doesn't have enough chooch to get it to suck down, so we got to help it out a little bit. Now we put a little preload on there, yeah. just the tip mine. And then suck it down. And now, she's down good and proper.
That was supposed to be on there. I luckily didn't have the mic on, so I'll give you the rundown. She was climb milling that air like a hot dam, so we decided to uh, give her the go. All I had to do was fix that bag. You'd be surprised how strong three mil of plastic is. It gets wrapped around a spindle and just adjusted the vacuum. The best laid battle plan never survives contact with the enemy. And contact she did just about right out the door. As maple is pretty hard, we're going to trottle down the feeds and speed kisser before we... Oh, fusion. Are you dead? I think you're dead. Remember the old Atari ST? Oh, no. Still kicking. The old Atari ST would come up with a bomb symbol. Oh, you knew it was frozen. Give her a little wiener sliding. Well, now she's all wetted up. Yeah, you can see it's pulling right out of the pores. Pulling the oil out. It's, it seals up better, but it's also better lubricated. So, if I can move it around, muscle, or gorilla it around with my dirty dick beater, that's not good. Something funny going on with the offset here. I apparently didn't uh, change it from this far corner. Rocket. I ain't reprobing. Wear that ruby tip right out. We got problems. Let's hit the coolant. Let's actually hit the coolant with the doors off. <laughs> we can chuckle about it now when shit hits the fan. Nobody fucking panic. Granted, the smartest thing was not to grab the camera, but I did a quick assessment, very quick assessment. Fingered she was well in hand, wasn't getting out of control, and it's got the built-in fire suppression. Now, I had the vacuum going so that we would not get combustible dust, explosive dust. This carbohydrate foam, doesn't matter if it's fut in, uh, flour, sugar, any kind of dusty particulate in the air that's combustible does have an explosive limit. It can explode. So we're mitigating that with the vacuum. But you see here, I just took, not only is it flammable, it's inflammable. And I took just the barest whiff of a heavy skim cut on the back of the vice jaw there. Just trying to test out this new routine, speeding things up, optimizing and so forth. And we see the results. I wonder how well those optical tool setters stand up to fire. This was over top of her, protecting her from the chips. Something tells me not well. I don't want to find out. Onto the wall of shame here. Just a friendly reminder. Smoke's cleared. <laughs> we got her down to eight minutes. Got to clean up this porridge on a uh, solidify like porridge on a poteen. Poteen. Still. You understand. Whiskey was uh, an Irish invention taken by the Normans, bastardized into whiskey from some unpronounceable Irish name. Of course, you can't tax it unless you can pronounce it. Now, mind you me, I have not had a proper piss up in a while. and I blame no one better. But I have a distinct recollection of laying on the floor, soaking up a Puke-shaped uh, whiskey stain with the peaty effervescence fresh in my mind. That peat 
comes from Ireland, of course. Peat smells, burning peat smells just like a garbage fire, minus the black bears. Uh, that, that peat, they would use that in order to dry the grains in a kiln. That's where that peaty, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but that is where the distinct peat garbage fire note of proper Scotch whiskey comes from, from Irish peat bogs. Gotta change this end mill too. She got a little hotted up going 500 inches a minute through hardened steel. In the words of the patron saint of teardowns, a beauty, a bonnie, and a joy forever. I got new respect for cabinet makers. Man, they're some kind of masochist. This material is so unforgiving. Not to worry though, you gotta give the inspector, you gotta let the inspector justify his existence. Throw him a bone, some easy ones. Hey, loose my rat, arc strike, paint chips, all, all, all the easy ones. Anyway, by the time, you won't even notice these. By the time the slow boat to Australia gets there, none of a diddling thing, all that work. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.